Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies with your speaker, Chris McCann. If you'd like more information or to hear more studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now, with your evening Bible study, here's Chris McCann. Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible study in the book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 32 of Revelation chapter 13. And we're going to read from verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And I'll stop reading there. Um, last time we were looking in Daniel 3 and we saw the very close parallel between that chapter and and the language here in Revelation 13. And God was uh, relating Daniel 3 to events that would take place at the end of time and the time of the great tribulation especially when satan would be loosed and satan would have the ability and god um, would give him the authority to have the corporate churches of the world take upon themselves the characteristics of satan and, and that especially involves uh, deceitfulness and lies and become formed into the image of Satan himself, the image of the beast. And if, if any uh, would not worship the image of the beast, the image of Satan, then they should be killed. Here Satan has uh, longed for and desired to be like God for so long and finally he's given his chance it, it's the time of the end it's a little season and he takes his seat as king over the corporate church and all the worship um, going on in the congregations is now being directed towards him because god's spirit has departed out satan is the only spirit within the church and and he's just soaking it all in he loves the adulation and if anyone fails to properly worship the image of the beast that was set up by satan then that person should be killed just just like king nebuchadnezzar if anyone doesn't bow down and worship to the golden image i'll throw them into a burning fiery furnace and kill them only problem was Nebuchadnezzar, despite his best effort, could not kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He couldn't even uh, burn their finger. He, he, he couldn't even singe their clothing. or He could not even bring the smell of fire upon them after casting them into that burning, fiery furnace. And, and so God is giving uh, his people strong encouragement and strong confidence. And he's, he's telling us, don't worry about Satan. It, it, yes, it's going to be crazy at the end of the world. Iniquity will abound all over the earth. And the restraint upon uh, men's sinful tendencies and activities will be um, taken away. He who holdeth will no longer hold. Uh, that must come to pass. It is my purpose. It is part of the judgment upon the world that this happen. But as you see the world go mad, as you see uh, the tremendous multiplication of sin all around you, and as the laws of God are cast away and and the things that used to constrain men are, are laid aside. Don't fear. Do not fear. Not even 
when it enters into the church, in, into that place of, um, in past centuries of, of um, relative safety and refuge, into that place where you could escape the world. No, it's my plan at the end that there be a falling away first, and I'm going to judge the corporate body for their unfaithfulness. As a matter of fact, it will begin at them, and and there will be false Christs and false apostles and and false gospels, and and uh, uh, the things that are going on in the church will be just as wicked and insane as the things going on out in the world with speaking in tongues and falling over backwards and holy laughter and homosexual bishops and women preachers and and my law will be trampled underfoot but again through Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego God is encouraging his people do not fear you will not be harmed you cannot possibly be harmed despite Satan's best effort and he will uh, without question uh, it will be his intent to harm you and he will do all that he can to harm you but I will be there the the son of God the, the form of the visage of the fourth in the fire will be there to protect you to watch over you and to preserve you 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 will not be injured in any way and and that is a really great source of comfort for the true believer and we can look back over the course of those 23 years the great tribulation period and and yes uh, it certainly was an evil time and yet we were taken care of god did feed and nourish his people spiritually he did bless us greatly outside of the churches and congregations. He watched over us and Satan was not able to uh, do the least thing to cause us spiritual harm in any way. Well, here in Revelation 13, 15, the statement is made, as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. If you, if you will not go along if you will not get in line and here in the early part of the great tribulation believers were still in the churches and and this is the time where the spirit of error is developing and getting worse and and there is a falling away and it's very obvious and the people of god um, having uh, a new heart and a new spirit and desirous to do the will of god desirous to worship God in spirit and in truth, desirous that the church they were involved with would also worship God in spirit and truth, could not help themselves. And so they went to the pastor and and they said, Pastor, I'm concerned about the message you preached. It almost sounded like you you were telling people to accept Christ. It, 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 it really sounded um, like a free will gospel, even though I've talked to you before and you, you've you told me that you believe in election. Well, now the pastor goes on to try and explain and, and you believe like a Calvinist, but preach like an Arminian. He was probably taught in seminary. And, well, you, you know, we have to make the free offer of the gospel. And, and he, he begins to offer some theological... Um, I, I don't. I don't want to be disrespectful, but basically, it's mumbo jumbo. It is uh, justifying the error that is being presented. And but the believers troubled. The believers troubled. Uh, God says in Ezekiel 13 that uh, there will be those that promise uh, uh, souls life, and and this will make the heart of the righteous sad. And it, it will result in strengthening the hand of the wicked because, sure, they'll grab a hold of accepting Christ or, or whatever it is you say I have to do and I'll do it. And, and then it, to them it's a form of guarantee that they're saved and yet there's been no change in them. 
But now they think they're all right with God. And it's basically strengthened the hands of the wicked. It's strengthened the will of the sinner to continue on in his sin. What do I need now? I accepted Christ. Uh, give that gospel to someone who needs it. I'm fine. I, I have everything uh, spiritually that I need because now I have salvation. The, the pastor basically assured me of that when he encouraged me to walk down the aisle and, and so forth. And so the heart of the righteous grows sad and troubled. And during this time, the leadership of the, of the church is also troubled. They see the child of God as the troublemaker. They look out and, and basically it's like Babylon. Everyone's bowing the knee. But there's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who refuses to bow the knee to the image of the beast that has been set up. And, and this is causing the congregation grief. Look, we're bowing down, all of us together, with one voice in unison. We submit. We don't give you trouble. We don't uh, uh, try to usurp your authority. And, uh, and that's a tragic thing. Uh, basically, they have exalted and, and lifted up the authority of the church, the authority of confessions and creeds, the authority of uh, theologians, of, of possibly uh, reform writings, above the authority of the Word of God, the Bible. But whatever form the image takes, whatever error, uh, um, uh, erroneous spirit is is being worshipped there we all are in agreement we all submit and it, it it just doesn't seem right this this person uh, begins to be labeled as a troublemaker and and it won't be long before the elders get together and they they have to decide what are we going to do we can't allow this to continue uh, this individual is just not understanding our church. And this is our church. These are our doctrines. This is our denomination. This is the way we have decided to worship God. And and if he, he won't do it our way, he should go somewhere else. And, and eventually the pastor will have, and maybe a couple of elders will have a discussion with the man and with his family or with his wife, and they will ever so kindly suggest, why don't you move along? Why don't you see if you can find a church more to your understanding, more in line with your beliefs? And, and it's incredible how there are so many churches with so many beliefs, and churches recognize that so many other churches have varying and different beliefs, and yet it never occurs, it, it seems, to the people within these churches to question any of their beliefs. Although there's, there's so many uh, variations, just, just dozens and dozens and dozens of other churches that teach differently. Somebody has to be wrong. Somebody has to um, be incorrect about the things they believe. Oh, but, but this is our position. This is our denominational stance. This is in our confession for hundreds of years. There's no way we're changing it. And, and that is the high place. That is the idol that infuriated God. That is what God gave space to the church to repent of. And then when he came to visit to see, he saw there was no repentance or turning from their worship of high places and and hand carved idols carved out of their own mind their own doctrine it, it was their own teachings rather than the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ that these people were in submission to and, and yet that's the way it stayed into finally the time where God determined to bring judgment upon them and judgment began at the house of God, and then it's just worsened. No one's repented. No one's turned from their their evil way, from their evil doctrines. And they continue worshiping, not God, 
not the God of the Bible, who must be worshipped in spirit and in truth, but worshipping the image of the beast. And, and now here's this man and his family, and they will not worship with us. They will not come to an agreement with us. Therefore, we will politely ask them to leave. And, and it's a very uh, kind, it, it respectful and polite form of killing the, these people. Uh, and, and that's how God likens being driven out of the church in John 16. In John chapter 16, it says in verse 1, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. See, there's a form of parallelism here. The first statement they shall put you out of the synagogues, is synonymous with the next statement, the time cometh whosoever killeth you. To be put out of the synagogue is the equivalent, spiritually, of being killed. And the synagogue is um, the Old Testament uh, word for church, basically. And, and God even uses that word in the book of Revelation, in relationship to the seven churches when he speaks of the church in Smyrna in Revelation 2 and he says in verse 9 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan it's a figure of the church the church has gone apostate, the church has fallen away. That happened even over the centuries of the church age, while the church age was legitimately underway, and, and churches would fall away. Satan would win a skirmish. He, he could not win the overall battle against the church because Christ was in the midst, but he could win a skirmish against the church, against a particular denomination occasionally. And... And when he did, it would become a synagogue of Satan, a church of Satan. And, and that's what God is referring to in John 16, too. They shall put you out of the synagogues, referring, yes, historically, the Jews were, the believing Jews in Christ were driven out of the synagogues. But that was a, a spiritual illustration of what would happen at the time of the end when God's people would be driven out of the churches. And when you're put out of the synagogue, it's like being killed. Because it was in the synagogue historically that God was worshipped, that God would have his people Israel. And, and it was a, a very serious thing to, to be put out of the congregation of Israel. That was akin to being cut off and, and to, um, uh, to be spiritually dead in, in some ways. That's how it was understood. And, um, and so that's the idea here in Revelation 13, 15. As many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Satan is the one ruling in the churches as the man of sin. And therefore, since the church had been delivered up and over into his hands, Satan had the authority to drive people out. And the ministers, his ministers, they were his emissaries, and, and he was developing his own rules, his own law, his own doctrine. And if you didn't adhere, if you didn't fall in line and fall down basically and worship according to these dictates then there's the door and 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 church after church god's people were being driven out and in in that way killed uh, because they they just could no longer uh, worship uh, with the doctrines that were 
were arising within these churches, and and this was getting worse and worse as the Great Tribulation uh, was progressing, and 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 we were going further into it. What a tremendous mercy! What a tremendous blessing it was for God to open up after some years into the Great Tribulation, into the judgment on his church, the information that it was time for the people of God to depart out, to leave the church, to go out into the world, and and to uh, no longer be under church authority, no longer under the pastor, under the elder, under the deacon, who were ministers of Satan. No longer um, would God's people have to listen to the errors of the church and and think that dutifully they they needed to go to church, so they had to be there. And uh, God wanted them to be there and, and in submission to church authority. No, God finally revealed I don't want you there. I don't want you in submission to their authority. As a matter of fact, I remove all authority from them. And the Bible does tell us that. In the Old Testament, in Ezekiel chapter 34, it says in verse 2, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? And the Lord goes on in condemnation. But then we read in verse 9, Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. God caused the shepherds to cease from feeding the flock. The the true believers, the elect, they can continue to feed the goats and and all that remain within the corporate body, uh, uh, numbering about two billion in the world were not God's sheep, they were the goats. They were not the wheat, they were the tares. God's people were commanded to come out, depart out of the midst of Jerusalem, flee to the mountains, and they obeyed by the grace of God. And and again, what a wonderful blessing it was to be freed from the feeling from the idea that we uh, we must worship in the church in order to be obedient to God, despite the fact that the church was a, a desolation. And now God's people had the blessing of God. Go to your homes out in the world, and, and or you can gather together in little groups or have a fellowship if you like, but no longer any church. The church age is over. The, the churches and congregations have come to an end. I have caused them to cease from feeding my true flock. Now Satan may rule over the goats. He can have the, the shell of the church. He can have the buildings and he can have the individuals that uh, refuse to hearken to my command. He can have the rebels that remain, but my people go out, and and the Lord's people did, and and we found blessing after blessing after blessing, as we departed out of the church. Uh, God uh, greatly strengthened us and comforted us through His Word and opened up the Scriptures uh, to an incredible degree. And he opened up our understanding to see the things that he had hidden in his word until the time of the end. Well, um, in Revelation 13, going on into verse 16, it says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. 
and here uh, to receive a mark in the right hand or in their foreheads. Here we have um, three uh, three groups or three uh, contrasting uh, people, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, and that would be six in total, and the number six points to work, and and uh, those that did remain behind in the churches are trying to get right with God through their own effort, their own work. We can be sure of that because it's only God's elect that are saved by grace, and and, and so that leaves those that are um, through their own effort, their own works. We can also see through these comparisons of small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, that um, that it's referring to all. It's all inclusive. Uh, it, it, it's small and great and everyone in between. It's rich and poor and everyone in between. It's free and bond. And so it's an all-encompassing statement to indicate no one is accepted. Everyone that remains in the church that has not been killed, not driven out, will receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that mark is the mark of the beast, the mark of Satan. It's a mark of ownership as the hand represents the will of the individual and the forehead is where the mind is to indicate that these people in in soul, in mind, and, and their will, uh, they are owned by Satan. They belong to Satan. Just uh, like a, a, a rancher uh, will, will gather his cows and he'll brand them. He'll put a mark on the cow that stands for um, his ranch. And maybe it's a W or an M or or some letter of his last name or the name of his ranch. But everyone knows, all right, now those cows belong to that ranch and that rancher. And, and it's the mark of that particular ranch. Well, that's the idea. Satan will put a mark on uh, these people to indicate they are his and, and they are unsaved. And, and therefore, in his kingdom of darkness and worshipers of the beast. And these are um, his people, as, as contrasted to the people of God who, uh, who do not receive that mark. Uh, God's people um, do not have the mark in their hand or in their foreheads. But every other unsaved individual in the earth does spiritually have the mark of the beast. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship's Evening Bible Studies. You can hear these studies Monday through Friday over Pal Talk, Skype, eBible Fellowship's webcast audio, or over your phone. For more information or to hear other studies, visit www.ebiblefellowship.com. Until our next study, may the Lord's perfect will be done.